its first cautious steps into the world of social media. On the 31st of January, Shane, one of uh, our partners, was online and Talia Goldberg tweeted something on Twitter where she said, um, check out Willie's new Valentine's campaign, Willie's Love Birds campaign, um, get online, get involved and you can win 50,000 bucks. Really exciting. So intrigued by what this social media step was, Shane went online. Um, and what Talia had posted was a photograph of the, um, the poster saying, get online, um, tweet your highlights to your Valentine and you could win 50,000 bucks. So we were quite intrigued. Um, Shane typed in the web address as he saw it on the photograph, Woody's Love Bird of today. It went nowhere. He typed it in again, it went nowhere. So a little confused, he Googled it and um, found that the address, what they meant to write was Woody's Love Birds with an S. Right? But on the posters that went nationwide, in all their stores, they left the S off the web address. So everyone was directed to Woody's Love Bird and Sarah Zeta. So Shane went out and saw this and he went to GoDaddy or one of the registrars and checked out Woody's Love Bird and Sarah Zeta and saw that it was available for registration. So he registered it. <laughs> so Woody's Love Bird and Sarah Zeta uh, would redirect you to Yuppie Chef and Sarah Zeta if you visited that web address. Uh, sitting around chatting, we Andrew raised uh, Soil for Life, who was a charity, and they are a fantastic crowd who teach underprivileged people uh, how to grow vegetables on soil which you couldn't believe in front of their shacks in the Cape Flats and in a number of the townships around Cape Town. Uh, and these people grow these incredible vegetables, uh, feed themselves, feed their neighbors, um, and any surplus goods they take to market and actually earn an income for themselves. And so Andrew said, well, why don't we tell Woolworths that they have to donate a certain amount of money to Soil for Life? Um, and in return, we'll give them their web address back. And we thought, brilliant. That's, that's excellent. Um, so we went into the office and we called the staff together and the staff. We got talking and we said that we mentioned something good with it and we think we're going to give it to Soil for Life and ask them to donate an amount of money. And it was Mike who said, why don't we get Woolworths to match the amount of money that uh, any Yuppie Chef fan donates to Soil for Life between now and the 14th of February, which is Woolworths D-Day for Valentine's Day. Um, and that's kind of, I think, really where the light switched on. And we said, brilliant. And at this point, sorry, by adopting Soil for Life as our charity for the year, um, what it means is on the Yuppie Chef website, just like you can go and buy a German knife, you can go and buy a Soil for Life donation uh, to any value starting at 25 Rand. So that's where the idea, idea came from, and we said, brilliant. We, so what we did, <laughs> was I wrote a blog post about it, posting the photograph, compliments of Talia. What we then did is we put a ransom note together. Right. And the ransom note said, <laughs> we have your lovebirds. <laughs> Hello Woolies, if you want your lovebirds back, you must match every rand donated to Soil for Life by Yuppie Chef fans between now and 14 February. Will the lovebirds get it? <laughs> <laughs> so once that went live, the first thing we did was we sent out an email to at the time was probably seven and a half thousand Yapisha fans who are people who have either signed up for our newsletter or have bought from us over the last few years. Um, and we said, newsflash, go and check it out, go and start donating um, because it's fun and we raise money for charity and it's kind of a cool David and Goliath story and let's go for it. And we got a, an incredible response straight off the bat. Um, we didn't communicate directly with Woolies, we didn't communicate. With we didn't call them, we simply posted it. It started going crazy on Twitter. Fred actually broke the story before we even put the ransom note up. Um, I think we were hovering there, waiting to click submit, if I remember correctly. And suddenly Fred had tweeted it. Um, so at that point, uh, we started to get a lot of positive response from the community. Because we also didn't want it to become an ugly legal wrangle if it went that way, we knew we needed to cap the limit that Woolies would need to owe, I guess. Um, and so because we didn't know whether we would raise a thousand rand or a million rand, we decided to set a limit of five thousand rand. Once it went up, donations started. So the first of Feb was a Monday. Um, by that evening, if I remember correctly, we were sitting on about five and a half thousand rand. Um, and there you see the first four days. Um, on the evening of the first Monday, I got a phone call from um, 
the lady who heads up social media for Woolies. And she phoned and said, um, hi Paul, you have caught us with our pants down and um, we are embarrassed by the situation, but we think the way you guys have handled it has been awesome. And um, we've chatted about it and we are happy to match your, to, to pay your ransom. We'll pay your five grand and we'll add two and a half grand to the kitty. So uh, on the Tuesday morning, um, Willie said, great, it's nine o'clock, can we have the URL back? And we said, sure, done deal, um, URL's back, we turned it back. And about an hour later, Willie's phoned back and said, you know, we've actually been giving it thought. We think it's good for the charity, we think it's a, an amusing story, and we're happy for you to keep the URL, provided you redirect people through to the original site afterwards. So we said, great, awesome. Over the next two or three days, people in the media started to pick up on it. And on Thursday, Jeremy Mansfield phoned and said, look, I've heard the story, I'd like to talk to you tomorrow morning on Friday morning on Highfelt um, at quarter to seven in the morning on the drive show. Which was the point where we knew that this was now going bigger than we had originally anticipated. We, we made it clear that we, it was very much to our interest, very much in, in sort of for life's interests, um, and we thought because of their response and Willie's interest for us to keep fueling this PR um, bandwagon that had started. So the next morning we spoke to Jeremy Mansfield, it was a great interview and from there kind of donations continued to pour out. We got 10,000 rand donation from Philips, we got a 10,000 rand donation from Standard Bank, uh, Sandham Developing Markets and then a number of individuals all contributing some very small amounts and some coming in saying here's 200 bucks, here's 500 bucks, here's 1,000 bucks. Um, um, so we hit that target by, by 14th of Feb. Um, we handed over a check to Soil for Life for 100 grand. Uh, so to summarize a bit, um, just in the difference in, in the effort required and the return on the campaigns, um, Willie's ad agency, digital agency, posters nationwide, custom web build, 50,000 rand prize that to give away, um, the staff required to run the campaign. On our side, 70 rand burnt chain at the time, I think, that domain <laughs> registration. Um, and then the ransom note generator, which I'll gladly give you the link to if you like. Um, and then again, lead time. Months of planning versus a 24 hour turnaround. Traffic, well he's got 2,000 registered participants for the, com for the competition and 10,000 visitors to the competition site. Um, we got 17,000 visitors to the blog and the traffic to our shop tripled over the period. I know the question will come. It generated no extra sales. <laughs> right. uh, and then raised awareness, as I think both for Soul for Life and Yuppie Chef. And Woolies, as much as it was a, a real blips on their part, I think, um, I think they really carved a positive voice for themselves in the social media space. Um, let's look quickly at some thoughts on it all from our side. We see this whole online reputation management thing and online and the way it moves as quite tricky terrain for traditional agencies. For an example here, we came across this recently, right? Is a submission to the Cannes uh, Lions Advertising Awards um, for the Willie's Lovebirds event, right? Which is interesting because <laughs> Jupiter has sent through an entry um, speaking of the way it responded to the situation, all right? And that that is worthy of an advertising award like CAN. All right? um, it's a fascinating space and I think that traditional agencies have, are in some ways grappling at or grabbing at straws to try and work out how to play this game. Um, maybe more importantly, trying to build a reputation for playing this game. It's, it's a space which I think if you are removed from the coalface, as you are when you're an agency separate from the actual business, um, it becomes quite difficult. And I think that agencies are find, finding it an interesting challenge. And that's the story. Thank you very much for your time.